With modern technology, it is possible to structurize water artificially. When seeds were grown under laboratory conditions using this kind of water, the soy sprouts had six times greater photon radiation than when ordinary water was used. Using structurized water makes vegetables ripen faster and increases the amount of useful microelements and vegetable proteins several fold. If we look at the shoots, the treated ones were long, even, and strong, while the untreated ones were short, thin, and weak. If we look at the plants today, those from the selected seeds have all ripened, but the ones from non-selected seeds have not. We have to say that using structurized water really does affect the growth of vegetables and fruits. For the purposes of irrigation, 20% less of this type of water is needed than when using ordinary water. No fertilizer was added to the soil or the water. The chemical composition remained the same, H2O. The only thing that had changed was its structure. At the present time, scientists can answer the question of how this happens, but science does not yet have an answer to the question of why. Depending on age, a human being is made up of 70 to 90 percent water. An adult drinks approximately 2.5 liters of water each day in order to sustain his normal life functions. Another 1.5 liters is absorbed through the skin during bathing or showering. Water makes a long and difficult journey before arriving in our homes. It used to be common knowledge that a settlement could only occur where there was a natural source of water. Today, whether or not there is water in a place is of no importance because we transport water for thousands of miles using high pressure. In nature, rivers and streams always flow along a smoothly curving course. But any water supply system has multiple right angle turns. The natural structure of the water breaks down more and more with each such turn. Water from a water supply system which flows into our homes through pipes has various forms, crystals of various forms, but they are all deformed. That is, it may look like this. It can look like this or have these crystals in many other arrangements, but you won't see any symmetry or beauty. Water that flows in a floor panel heating system is devitalized and rotten. It sucks energy out of the people, plants, and animals living in that house. It actually steals the energy. It is well known that the water supply in many large cities is a closed loop system. After undergoing aggressive chemical purification and passing through powerful filters, the water in these systems is returned to our homes, still remembering the chemicals and the violence it was subjected to. Even stronger, however, is the informational pollution that the water accumulates as it flows down miles of long pipes through thousands and thousands of houses and apartments. We pollute water spiritually, and this happens on a huge scale. Why? The water adopts all of the hatred, all of the malice, the stress. The water is almost dead by the time it enters our body. Our Earth is a gigantic container of water in which all forms of life arose. And every living thing is itself essentially a container of water. With modern technologies, we can reach far into outer space. And as we attempt to discover life on other planets, the first thing we look for is water. There is no life on Earth without water. 
And one of the big questions is whether or not, in case that there should be comparable life on other planets, this would also be based on the presence of water. There is strong belief that the first living organisms were in the water and only much, much later did organisms develop that could live outside of the water. I don't think that this is at all a coincidence. It is absolutely no accident that the opening lines of the Bible mention water, where it talks about the creation of the world, of life, and of man. It has to do with water first and foremost. Like sculptures that have not yet been created are present in a piece of clay, so the images of all future living organisms were present in the water. Water merely brought to life a pre-existing conception. But for any process to begin requires an impulse. Wise men of ancient times believed that the impulse for life to arise was a primordial divine spark. This spark imprinted in the water the sequence of future development. The entire course of evolution provides evidence of this. Every species of living being, from the simplest bacteria to mammals, strove to achieve its own perfection. Science most likely will never find out the exact process by which Adam was created, what went with what and in what proportions. But the Koran, for example, says that water played a part in this by the will of God. I think, I think that scientists should look more closely at how water interacts with their molecules. At a molecular level, it creates the structure of DNA. We wouldn't have the DNA helix without water. It creates the structure of proteins, so our bodies wouldn't work um, without the water. Every seed, every embryo begins its life exclusively in water. Amniotic fluid plays a role in the embryo's development and preservation. It is the surrounding water, like a universal computer, that reveals any biological program. And thus water is also the only thing that can change it. The preacher wrote long ago, is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and pilled white strakes in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks, in the gutters, in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, and the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle, ring-straked, speckled, and spotted. We subjected water to super-weak magnetic field impulses. These fields are tens of thousands of times weaker than the Earth's natural magnetic field. That means they are negligibly small from the standpoint of modern science. Fish were introduced into water that had been treated in this way, and the fish soon produced an unusual hatch of small fry. They differed radically from other fish to which they were related, though they looked as much alike as twins. <laughs> Gray stripes appear on the belly of all these males at once, along with colored spots, which had not been observed previously. These are called phenotype changes, and it is of fundamental importance that these changes appear not just in some of the treated fish, but in all of them at the same time. And these phenotype changes that we caused are not a hypothesis, they occurred in practice. The experiment resulted in changes not only in the outward appearance of the fish, but also in their behavior. 
they began to react to outside stimuli in the same way. It was as if the whole school had acquired a collective mind. A whole important area of problems came up, which had not been studied whatsoever. Therefore, it was decided that it would suffice to establish even just the fact that behavior could change the form of animals using only water, which fact, in and of itself, is very significant. If water has such a strong effect, that is, we shouldn't make it public without thoroughly studying this. In 1932, sensational news traveled around the world. The American physicists Harold Ure and Albert Osborne had discovered that, in addition to ordinary water, heavy water also exists in nature. Deuterium 2O. The splitting of deuterium was the basis for creation of the most destructive bomb, the hydrogen bomb. Now everybody knows very well what radioactive radiation can cause, but it turns out that there are other even more awesome effects. Rather more horrific is the change in the structure of water, covering huge areas, thousands of miles larger than the nuclear weapons testing grounds. It made no difference where the test was carried out, in the atmosphere, on the ground, or underground. Colossal changes occur in the water and the water's memory changes, and people drink that water, animals drink it, and suddenly terrible changes take place. When the explosion occurs, waves are formed, which die out fairly quickly in the ground, but the water may continue to fluctuate for another 30 days. Swinging like a pendulum, the waves create a new and pathological ordering in the water. It has been noted that the number of suicides rises abruptly after such tests. By a factor of two, two and a half, three, medical experts had absolutely no explanation for this, but we could understand it. We showed the brain is made of water, about 85%. So these changes take place in the brain, and a conflict between the water structures arises. The bioplasm of the brain is disrupted, and the result is that the person is deprived even of such an extremely important incentive as the drive to live. In ancient legends, the hero would always be sent to fetch dead water in a place from which there is no return. According to tradition, the only sea on earth in which there is no life came into existence where the destroyed cities Sodom and Gomorrah had been located, the Dead Sea. There really is no such thing as dead water. Water gives life. It always has this original vitality. It may be used more correctly or less correctly, but it is always positive. How a person handles water, if he approaches the water with good thoughts or blesses it, and says thank you to it. The quality of the water will improve, and the water will have a positive effect on a person and his body. According to the Chronicles, in 1472, Abbot Carl Gustinsis was arrested on the basis of a false denunciation and interrogated in connection with having caused a certain prominent lady to fall ill. While he was being held in a dungeon, the abbot was given only a crust of stale bread every day, along with a dipper of rotten, stinking water. After 40 days, the prison warden noticed that Father Carl not only had not gone into decline, but he even seemed to have gained health and strength, which only served to convince the inquisitors that the abbot had connections with dark forces. Later, Carl Gustensis confessed under brutal torture that he had recited a prayer over the rotten water he was given, thanking the Lord for bestowing these trials upon him. After that, the water tasted bland and turned fresh and clear. <laughs> 